Thank you for the opportunity to present to you today. I'm going to talk about a subject that nobody wants to hear, including me, but I think it's important enough that it bears bringing attention to. We've all seen this picture, this old geezer with the poster board, the end is nigh. I agree with this old geezer, the end is nigh. Perhaps that makes me an old geezer too. But this is, I don't think, is the biggest problem we face. I think that the end of habitat for humans on Earth is nearing its end. And the big problem is that the end is being totally ignored. We are not being told by almost anybody that the end is nigh, much less that the important feature is the end of habitat for human animals on this planet. With that in mind, I want to start with what shall we do? What, what do we do with this information that tells us our lives will be short? As Homer wrote in the Iliad some 2,800 years ago, quote, any moment might be our last. Everything is more beautiful because we are doomed. Wait, what? Homer, in the previous paragraphs, referred to the gods envying mortal humans. Why would the gods envy us mortal humans? Because any moment might be our last. Everything is more beautiful because we are doomed. You will never be lovelier than you are now. We will never be here again. Homer pointed out that the gods envy us for this. For the gods, one day is just like any other day. There's no, re no reason to stop and smell the roses. There's no advantage to appreciating the here and now if you have forever yet to live. Oddly, this depiction of Homer in the lower left screen looks a lot like the person pointing out that the end is being totally ignored. We are in the midst of abrupt, irreversible climate change. As renowned professor Andrew Glickson pointed out in his October 9th, 2020 book, The Event Horizon, quote, during the Anthropocene greenhouse gas, forcing has risen by more than 2.0 watts per meter squared, equivalent to more than 2 degrees C above pre-industrial temperatures, which constitutes an abrupt event over a period not much longer than a lifetime. End quote. This is the very definition of abrupt climate change. Even the scientifically conservative Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change admitted in their September 2019 special report on the ocean and cryosphere and changing climate that climate change is now irreversible as a result of an overheated ocean. Clearly, Earth is in the midst of abrupt and irreversible climate change. The ongoing rate of temperature rise indicates that Earth's climate will resemble that of the Pliocene epoch as soon as 2030, according to Burke and colleagues in their December 26, 2018 peer-reviewed paper in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. This paper relies upon the IPCC's conservative representative concentration pathways, which ignore aerosol masking and dozens of self-reinforcing feedback loops. Yet it indicates a stunningly rapid increase in global average temperature as early as 2030. The ongoing and projected rates of change are occurring rapidly enough to assure the inability of vertebrates and mammals to keep up. According to peer-reviewed papers in Ecology Letters on June 20th, 2013, in the case of vertebrates, and in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences on October 30th, 2018, with respect to mammals. That humans fall into the category of vertebrate mammals ought to be of considerable concern. I mentioned aerosol masking, and I suspect many viewers are not familiar with the term. I'll explain briefly. At the same time, industrial activity produces the greenhouse gases that trap some of the heat resulting from sunlight striking Earth, Industrial activity also produces small particles that prevent sunlight from even reaching Earth's surface. These particles, called aerosols, act as something of an umbrella to keep sunlight from even striking Earth's surface. They prevent the sun's rays from penetrating the atmosphere, and they therefore preclude additional heating. According to the godfather of climate science, James Hansen, the aerosols fall out of the atmosphere within a few days. More than two dozen peer-reviewed papers have been published on this topic, the latest of them indicating that Earth will warm an additional 55% when aerosol masking is lost. 
with an increase in temperature of 133% over land. 133% over land. This paper was published in the prestigious Nature Communications on June 15, 2021. Loss of aerosols will take us to more than 3 degrees Celsius above the 1750 baseline very quickly. It is difficult for me to imagine many species keeping up with this rapid rate of environmental change. In other words, Earth is in the midst of exponential climate change. This rapid rate of change is something for which evolution by natural selection has us very poorly prepared. After all, we tend to predict the near future based on the recent past. Exponential barely intrudes into our evolutionary dictionary. With that in mind, I'd like to provide a simple example of exponential change. Everybody knows about playing with dominoes, but what you may not know is that a domino can knock over another domino which is about one and a half times larger. So what I have here is a chain of dominoes. Each one is one and a half times larger than the previous one. And the smallest domino is about five millimeters high and one millimeter thick. And I will carefully place it. And there are 13 dominoes. And the largest domino, it weighs about 100 pounds and is more than a meter tall. Ready? Boom. That was 13 dominoes. If I had 29 dominoes, the last domino would be as tall as the Empire State Building. Well, that's inconvenient. And the worst is yet to come, probably in the very near future. Most importantly, an ice-free Arctic Ocean looms large. Arctic ice acts as Earth's air conditioner, according to University of Connecticut Professor Mark C. Urban's February 14, 2020 paper in Science. As suggested by a groundbreaking paper by Giovanni Strona and Corey Bradshaw, published November 13, 2018 in Scientific Reports, the rapid rate of environmental change associated with an ice-free Arctic Ocean likely would cause the extinction of all life on Earth. After all, a planetary temperature rise of 5 to 6 degrees C above the 1750 baseline would, to quote from the title of this paper, annihilate planetary life. It is difficult for me to imagine only an additional 3 to 4 degrees C above the current global average temperature within a year or so after an ice-free Arctic Ocean. An ice-free Arctic Ocean was incorrectly projected to occur in 2016 plus or minus three years in the 2012 issue of Annual Review of Earth and Planetary Sciences. Although we have avoided such an outcome so far, the future of this topic appears daunting. Professor James Anderson, the Harvard atmospheric scientist famous for discovering the link between chlorofluorocarbons and the Antarctic ozone hole, was quoted in Forbes on January 15, 2018, quote, The chance there will be permanent ice in the Arctic after 2020 is sorry, after 2022, is essentially zero, end quote. Nearly three and a half years later, Professor Jennifer McKinnon of the University of California, San Diego, and the Scripps Institution said during an interview with CBS News on April 23, 2021, that she expects an ice-free Arctic Ocean in 2022. That's not long from now. We can almost see it from here. The profound warming of Earth is already causing millions of deaths each year. A paper published in Science Advances on May 8, 2020 indicates lethal wet bulb temperatures have been surpassed in tropical and subtropical locations around the world. According to the July 2021 issue of the peer-reviewed journal The Lancet Planetary Health, more than 5 million deaths result each year from, quote, non-optimal temperatures, end quote. Given that planetary overheating appears to be a one-way street, the future looks grim. It also seems short, at least for life on this most beautiful of planets. That's the bad news. I would not prepare and deliver this presentation if I only had bad news to bring. So then, what's the good news? In light of abrupt, irreversible climate change that has us headed for a planet without habitat for living organisms? For starters, we get to live. 
Our species showed up on this pale blue dot about 320,000 years ago. It already uh, had habitat waiting for us. Habitat is defined by Linnea Hall and colleagues in their peer-reviewed article in the spring 1997 issue of Wildlife Society Bulletin. Quote, We define habitat as the resources and conditions present in an area that produce occupancy, including survival and reproduction, by a given organism. Habitat is organism-specific. It is the sum of the specific resources that are needed by organisms. Whenever an organism is provided with resources that allow it to survive, that is habitat. In other words, habitat includes all we need to survive and reproduce. When Homo sapiens showed up on Earth, habitat awaited us. During the last few decades, we have managed to destroy much of the very habitat we need to survive. We are in a position to destroy the remaining habitat for our species and also for all life on Earth. Why all life on Earth? Two reasons. One, the rapid rate of environmental change in the wake of our own extinction poses an existential threat to all life on Earth as indicated in the paper I already mentioned by Strona and Bradshaw. And two, the uncontrolled meltdown of the world's nuclear facilities also represents a serious threat to all life on Earth. I think I've covered the rate of change in sufficient detail, but what's this about nuclear facilities causing extinction? According to the title of a paper in the peer-reviewed journal Communications, Earth, and Environment, published April 12, 2021, quote, the Toba supervolcano eruption caused severe stratospheric ozone depletion. Indeed, this one event about 74,000 years ago effectively destroyed the ozone layer, according to the lead author in the paper published in Communications, Earth, and Environment, coincident with the release of the paper, quote, the UV stress effects would be similar to the aftermath of a nuclear war. For example, crop yields and marine productivity would drop due to UV sterilization effects. Going outside without UV protection would cause eye damage and sunburn in less than 15 minutes. Over time, skin cancers and general DNA damage would have led to population decline. End quote. That's from the eruption of a single volcano. The uncontrolled meltdown of the world's nuclear facilities presumably would remove much more atmospheric ozone than Toba. After such an event, the living would soon envy the dead. As a result, we have inadvertently managed to become the most important species in planetary history. Only we can cause the extinction of all life on Earth. Sadly, it seems we are intent upon doing so. I save the best for last. There is one way out, in my informed opinion. Implementation of the mere reflection framework will allow us to reflect incoming sunlight and therefore cool the planet quickly. I strongly encourage you to visit the Mere Reflection website and leave a message for the team at Harvard University's Roland Institute. Offer to support this all-important work, and then contact your favorite billionaire and ask him or her to support this novel idea. The stakes could not be higher. If you, too, are interested in retaining life on Earth, please study the Mere Reflection framework at merereflection.com. If you find this cause inspired and worthy, as do I, Please join me in supporting this framework. Do it for me. Do it for your grandchildren. Do it for your children. Do it for you. The clock ticks while we act. It also ticks if we don't act. Let's act. Let's join together in the spirit of Aristotle's definition of friendship, working together for the common good. Let's work together. Let's work together for the common good. Thank you.